removing mechanical support can feel daunting since it's not an easy on-off switch like medications. Assessing patient readiness to wean followed by a weaning trial can eliminate some of the doubt. A weaning trial will never be the same as a full withdrawal of the device. The steps to weaning and removing impella support parallel that of the balloon pump. Step 1. Assess readiness to wean. Have the patient's hemodynamics improved? Are they requiring de-escalating doses of vasoactive medications? Is end organ function stable, meaning the kidney, liver, and brain? These questions help assess readiness to attempt weaning. Always keep in mind the indication for placing the impella originally. Was this a periprocedural support device? If so, weaning should be swift. Was this placed for mechanical support while recovering from a myocardial infarction? That might take longer, and you'll need to carefully assess clinical stability. Step 2. Weaning Trial There are several published methods to wean impella support. The weaning should be tailored to the individual patient since there is no data to support one method over another. The hallmark of a successful wean is maintaining a cardiac index above 2.2 liters per minute per meter squared, despite decreasing mechanical support, meaning the patient stays out of cardiogenic shock. Fast wean protocols recommend reducing the P level every two hours. Slower protocols recommend reducing the P level every 12 hours. As you reduce the power, assess for stability, including MAP greater than 65 millimeters of mercury, heart rate less than 100 beats per minute, a cardiac index above 2.5 liters per minute per meter squared, adequate oxygenation, improving end organ function, and no or minimal vasoactive drug requirement. The cardiac index should be greater than 2.5 liters per minute per meter squared because as you decrease the power, this number will likely continue to fall. The ultimate goal is a cardiac index greater than 2.2 liters per minute per meter squared with no impella support. There is a measure called cardiac power output, or CPO, which is a measure of cardiac muscle strength and can be calculated using this equation. CPO is the strongest correlate of survival in patients needing hemodynamic support. CPO above 0.6 watts is a measure of readiness to wean support. The minimum setting for the impella is P2. If the weaning trial is successful and the patient is ready for removal, at P2 level of support, they should maintain adequate cardiac output and stable hemodynamics. Step 3. Removal of impella. The impella is a large bore arterial cannula, and operators often utilize a percutaneous closure device during initial implantation. An experienced user should be responsible for removing the impella, ensuring hemostasis at the site of access, and evaluating for arterial injury. Possible complications at the time of removal include oozing, aneurysm, hematoma, pseudoaneurysm, or retroperitoneal bleeding in severe cases. If a patient has not been adequately stabilized prior to removal, their hemodynamics may worsen, requiring increasing vasoactive support and or replacement of mechanical support. Now, rather than continuing on to complications of the impella, I encourage you to return to Chapter 2, Lesson 4 for a quick review. The management of impella complications is, in essence, the same. Primary concerns include device migration, hemolysis, vascular injury or bleeding, and limb ischemia.